if the salinity levels goes high because of uh, less rainfall and a drought here, then people would abandon the land. That would result in beginning of desertification and eventually because of loss of income, large number of people would migrate to cities and there would be social and cultural problems. Like I remember instances where young men were not finding bride because they were staying in saline areas. <laughs> yeah, the hardship of women was so much that people are not ready to give their daughters in saline areas. We've been talking about the problems of salinity and how it affects the livelihoods of people along the Gujarat coast, especially the farmers. Yet what we're seeing here is lush green fields. How do you explain that? This is a result of many efforts which are done by organizations, people, community themselves and the government. You can see farm buns here. The water in the well is more because of this, because the water which is collected here is diverted into the well and which is used to make it green in this season. To address the economic, health and social problems caused by increased salinity in groundwater, a variety of interventions are being tested some of which are already having a positive impact. In the Indian state of Gujarat, fields are being poisoned by salt water. The state government estimates that along two-thirds of Gujarat's 1,600-kilometer coastline, farmland is turning saline at the rate of half a kilometer a year. But there's a fast-growing awareness in the state that the salt incursion must be stopped in part by making better use of rainwater. This is Gear Forest, where the seven major rivers feeding the Gujarati coastal settlements originate. Famous as the last refuge of the Asian lion, it's also a vital watershed. The ecosystem of this forest provides environmental services to the Gujarat region, helping to recharge the water table and reduce the salinity problem on the southern coast. It's also the home to the last Asian lions in the wild. Hunted to the brink of extinction in the 19th century, their population is today happily rising. The last census, taken in 2005, recorded 359 lions. Don't waste water. Wake up to the problem of saline water, these women are shouting. In poor households, women are responsible for fetching their families' drinking water. With this task getting harder every day, women are leading a grassroots campaign against water wastage. It's exactly this kind of consciousness raising that has galvanized communities into taking, quite literally, concrete action. Here we are inside uh, what is one of the most critically needed and the most successful intervention for dealing with salinity. This is a roof rainwater harvesting tank and it collects about 20,000 litres of water. Families in this region have been adopting roof rainwater harvesting techniques simply because the salinity levels have been rising dramatically. Roof rainwater harvesting started off as a pilot project by the Aga Khan Development Network to help the poorer sections of the population. But now, it has taken on a life of its own. To date, some 5,000 tanks have been installed in saline areas, each one holding 20,000 litres of rainwater, enough to last the household for four months. But households use just 5% of the available fresh water in Gujarat. Agriculture accounts for a staggering 89%, according to the state government. So the main burden of responsibility for reducing water consumption falls on farmers. Uh, farmers are, uh, you know, they realize, they, they won't deny the fact that they've extracted the groundwater for their livelihoods needs. And uh, it is one of the reasons why they've reached the situation they have and they take responsibility for it. And if you work on that angle and, you know, then I think uh, there is hope, there is definitely hope. I mean, we've seen lots of ingenious solutions come up by farmers in which they've tried to address this problem. One ingenious solution is drip irrigation. The technology began in China around 2,000 years ago and has been successfully applied from California to Israel. Now that the seasonal monsoons do not provide enough water to sustain the increases in crop production, Gujarati farmers are starting to see its virtues. It's estimated that some 1,500 farmers have adopted this economical technology. 
This betel leaf farmer previously used wasteful flood irrigation. But for the last two seasons, he's achieved good quality harvests of this popular cash crop through the drip method. Flood irrigation is very labor intensive. With this system, I don't have to get up at night to change the direction of water which is flowing in. I just switch on the drip and go to sleep. In terms of yields, what he's saying is that the quality of leaves have come better, one. The yield itself may not have increased in hmm. terms of quantity, but the input in terms of labor and fertilizer has reduced. So his net profit has increased considerably. Okay.